But yeah, here here comes my camera face. So I'm, I did Game Boy Camera and I did Photo Dojo. And then PDI Check was also like another 3DS thing. So if you, I don't know. It was handheld. There was, a, there was an era where I was obsessed with like... There was also the 3D era where I talked about 3DSs a lot. <laughs> anyway, let me skip this app. Whoop. Uh, I switched to purple now. So purple looks good on me. Nope, I didn't mean to go there. And also, I, and I'm, I'm, now, I'm now in 1080p. It took me this long to switch to 1080p. I don't know why I've rendered my videos in 720p before, but like I finally switched to 1080. So, new spec and new logo. Nintendo is a company that always puts a focus on fun. Whether it's making video games or even just toys and accessories, they always try to find some way to incorporate fun into things that might seem mundane at first glance. Using a vacuum cleaner, cleaning up other people's mess, improving your weight and balance, literally folding cardboard, monitoring your sleep activity, oh. Yeah, well, okay, they can't all be winners. This joke, I did like, uh, originally, uh... Originally, the the joke in this video was supposed to be you know I I list all these things at at the end I originally ended with the vitality sensor, which was you know oh monitoring monitoring your uh, heart rate oh it didn't go well though then but then I realized after I actually did that joke I realized wait another YouTuber I forgot who it was also made a video on the gay boy camera and basically started with almost the exact same thing and I was like oh remember the vitality sensor that was a gimmick that fell. And I didn't kind of I didn't want to feel like I was ripping them off, so I switched to the quality of life project that technically still hasn't, you know, uh resurfaced yet, so in cardboard, monitoring your sleep. I mean, what happened to that? Did that become Pokemon Sleep and then you know it died? I think Pokemon Sleep kind of took cues from that, right? But we haven't seen that since. <laughs> is is anything that measures your sleep activity destined to fail at Nintendo? I have no idea. Activity oh. Yeah, well, they can't all be winners. One of the more staple examples of Nintendo turning a basic idea into a fun little experience is the camera. A lot of Nintendo systems have toyed around with the simple concept of cameras. You have the first built-in camera on the DSi, the ones on the 3DS that could take 3D photos, the one on the Wii U that I'm not sure anyone else used, and the one on the Switch that's still technically a camera. Each one of them has different unique functions, whether it's augmented reality or virtual sandwich eating, and they've pretty much become classic Nintendo gimmicks. Even on the Wii, which didn't have a camera, they included a photo channel, so you could put in SD cards with your favorite photos on them, just to draw on them or turn them into 192 piece puzzles. I, I really just like dug out the Wii and then... Actually this was recorded on the Wii U, but... I dug out a Wii U just to like... Talk about the photo channel for like five seconds, <laughs> and also I kind I did. I was thinking I was saying that like you know I could probably do a video just talking about all the cam all the built-in camera apps on the DS and 3DS. I don't know if that was on my list of ideas. Uh, actually, I think it is. It might be. Uh, but yeah, I feel like you know something about talking about the photo channel, even just the built-in apps on the camera. Could be an interesting subject, or just talk about the camera apps in general on the 3DS. Kind of like a... Yeah. I don't know where I was going with that. Oops, sorry. Uh, it's, a, it's a bit late, so <laughs> don't mind my weird unscripted rambling. Has anyone, like, ever solved these? I could make a whole other video just to talk about the cameras on all of the Nintendo systems, but today I want to focus on just one, the grandfather of all Nintendo cameras, the Game Boy Camera. When it's least expected, you're I, had to put you're the, I had to put the entire commercial in here. It had to. It, it's golden. Start today, smile, you're on Game Boy Camera. It's fun to look at yourself as other people do. How's your sense of humor? There's a rumor laughter's on its way. Smile, you're on Game Boy Camera. Yes, with Game Boy Camera, you can turn photography into photography. Smile, you're on Game Boy Camera.
Good now job. I know what you're probably thinking. Yeah, I've heard of that. It's just a crappy camera for the Game Boy that took potato quality pictures I in four shades that of gray. Commercial showed a video being played, as if that's a function of the Game Boy camera when it's not. Good advertising. But I think it would be cool to go even deeper, to see the surprisingly deep entertainment value you could have gotten from a simple camera made by Nintendo in 1998. To start off, it actually wasn't that simple. At the time of its release, the Game Boy camera was the world's smallest digital camera. I guess a small camera resolution really helped Nintendo achieve that. The appearance of the Game Boy camera should be familiar to most of you. It's basically a Game Boy cartridge with a small camera strapped on top which you can turn 180 degrees. You plug it in your Game Boy and the first thing you'll notice is that the software was developed by creatures in Game Freak. Yep, when they're not working on Pokemon, they've always made some really weird games, and that actually still holds true to this day. Give Game Freak their chance, <laughs> please stop forcing them to make Pokemon. They can make weird and unique stuff, right? They made Harmonite, they made Tempo, they made... Anyway. Go our obligatory viewing of the Dancing Mario and arrive at the menu screen. Looks simple enough, right? Take photos, view them, and play games with them. Well, let's start from the top. Shoot, contrary to popular belief, does not give you the option to literally shoot a little boy or princess in an RPG interface, but instead gives you different options for shooting photos. I knew, I knew at this point, like, people are probably expecting me to make a joke about the run, the run screen, and kind of like building it up. And I'm sure most of you already know that the Game Boy camera doesn't have the greatest picture quality. Yeah. So, uh... Obviously, this is emulator footage. Uh, this was taken on the MGBA emulator because obviously, where would I get direct footage of this? But uh, yeah, uh, MGBA, the GBA emulator, has uh, support for the Game Boy camera and Game Boy printer. So it's basically, you know, taking my computer webcam and trying to simulate it as a Game Boy camera. I know it's probably not as accurate as, you know, the real thing, but, you know, the resolution is the same. Still use the same four shades of gray, so you know it, it still works for my purposes. This direct footage is taken from an emulator using my computer's webcam, but still the resulting image is a mere 128 by 112 pixels using the limited four shades of gray. However, the images aren't really an incomprehensible mess of pixels. Under good lighting conditions and using the D-pad to toggle the brightness and contrast accordingly, right, you can actually get some decent photos with it. Sure, they're not in glorious high definition, but it has that unique 90s aesthetic that's adored by some people, including me. It's like whatever you capture with this camera suddenly gets transported. I really wish I could have, like, I, I could have a way to, like, transfer the photos on my actual cartridge to the emulator so I can show, like, a direct feed gameplay of it. And I didn't have the option to do that before, but now I do. I could actually finally back up the save files of my Game Boy camera cartridges using an N64 transfer pack and use an EverDrive in conjunction with that to basically dump the save files from a Game Boy camera because I didn't have any tools that could do that before. So yeah, that's pretty neat. I can I, I can now get the pictures I took like all those years ago in high quality without, you know, needing some expensive equipment. Something years back in time. Of course, brightness and contrast aren't the only things you can change. By pressing select, you get several more options. You can toggle differing, change the shutter sound, flip the image, which comes in really handy if you're using a GBA SP, and you can even modify the color palette. Going back to the menu, check gives you a quick shortcut to scrolling through your camera row. All these, all these, and all these photos on the emulator, I had to take it by you know holding up my computer webcam against the thing, and I recall it was. Uh, Big pain to do that. Items provides you with a self timer as well as a time lapse option, which is weird because the Game Boy camera only has enough room to store 28 shots, which I'd imagine is a bit on the insufficient side for something like a time lapse. But it's neat to see the option there nonetheless. Magic is where the real magic happens. It offers different ways to change your images, such as the trick lenses that mirror or stretch your images, combining four images into. He's feeling long today. On making a photo montage and so on. You can even yeah, I know some people. Some people caught onto that. I'm, I'm sorry. Eight panorama photos, very blurry panoramas, but panoramas nonetheless. That's still a very satisfying word to say. Panoramas. There's also the game face option, which lets you take four photos of your face that will be used in the various mini games, which we'll touch on later. Finally, we have run, which does well. I think everyone knows what it does at this point.
Okay. Yeah, that was a. I think that was a nice subversion. Also, I did not drop the Game Boy directly onto hard floor. I, there was a, there was a cushion there to to support it, just in case you were worried. That we have the fuel option. In this unsettling menu, we have two seemingly redundant options, album and show, which seemingly appear to be redundant at first glance. I'm so glad someone actually caught this line. Uh, not my proudest writing, but you know. Let's check out show first, which offers three options. Slideshow lets us view our pictures as a slideshow, with different options for choosing whether or not to shuffle them as well as the background music, which is either the Blue Danube Waltz, Or just noises. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat. I love noises. The animation option lets us select from 32 different music tracks and play. Oh, uh, we can't do anything about that yet. We have to wait a bit, I guess. And Hotspot, which does uh, apparently nothing at the moment. I guess we'll have to come back to that later as well. Well, onto the album then. Similar to the check option from the shooting menu, this lets you view any of the 28 photos you've taken, but with the addition of viewing the special B album, which contains preset patterns and images that you can unlock by fulfilling certain criteria, kind of similar to achievements. The ones linked to getting high scores in the minigames are absolutely ridiculous, trust me. I still have not I unlocked all of them by the way, on my actual cartridges. Also talk about the stuff you can do with your photos as well. Press A and a bunch of options appear. Let's start from the right and go clockwise. Frame lets you change the frame of the photo with a total of 18 different designs. I'm kind of really like diving super deep into like all the functions of the Game Boy camera, which is kind of like the point of the entire video. I don't think other any other like Game Boy camera video has been this in depth before. So uh Man lets you leave a message about the photo so you can preserve your thoughts on the pixelated sandwich you had for lunch or something. Delete is pretty self-explanatory. Bye. Paint and stamp offer different ways to decorate your photos. Drawing on them might be a bit difficult because all you have is a d-pad and buttons, but you do have multiple pen sizes, drawing speeds, and uh, colors to choose from. That's a really generous term right there, Nintendo. Color. You also have stamps of different varieties, from facial features to letters and symbols, and even Nintendo characters. And this is where some of the major differences between the Japanese and American versions of the Game Boy camera reside. By the way, uh, so I hear I have like a Japanese camera, which is red, and an American camera, which is yellow. And since then, I've actually traded my red camera for one that is atomic purple, which was a Japanese exclusive color, and it looks super sexy. Uh, you can tell I really like translucent electronics. And a uh, translucent purple Game Boy camera, really cool looking. Some of the stamps are exclusive to either the Japanese or American version, such as the Mario stamps or a few of the Pokemon stamps. In fact, there was also a special Golden Zelda edition of the Game Boy camera released through the Nintendo Power magazine that contained exclusive Zelda-themed stamps. Man, these must be pretty rare to find nowadays. It is. Actually, there are way more differences between the Japanese and American versions besides the stamps. Almost everything from the menu screens to the unlockable pictures are different between regions. I highly recommend going through the Cutting Room Floors article on the Game Boy Camera to see all of them. Back to the last option, which is to print your photos using the special Game Boy Printer. Now I would also love to put some focus on this accessory, but this video is going long enough as it is. Plus I only have one other game which is compatible with the thing. So I'll save the detailed babbling about this little printer for the future, maybe in a things of interest video or I something. Maybe I should get to that. Uh, I still only have the one game that supports it. I have Mario Deluxe and Game Boy Camera. I know people say like, oh, there's Pokemon, there's Link's Awakening, but I have none of those games. So, <laughs> but you know, the pocket printer is still interesting in its own right. And some people might be wondering, oh, where are you getting like new paper for the thing? Because if you get like, you know, new old stock, Game Boy camera printer paper, it might have been, you know, stored in the warehouse for like 20 years, but by the time you get it back out, it's also not working, and the camera, you know, the uh, the quality is still kind of crappy because the paper is kind of deteriorated, and picture quality is just kind of fady. I kind of just, like, got brand new thermal paper, like the regular ones used in receipts, and just kind of, like, trimmed them so they're the same, they're the same size as the Game Boy pocket printer ca paper, and, like, it was a bit of a hassle, but you know, I managed to do it at the end, and it worked, and it worked very well. So, 
To cover the basics, the Game Boy printer, or pocket printer as it was known in Japan, was first and foremost designed to be the companion to the Game Boy camera. It was a battery-powered thermal printer, meaning that it didn't need any ink, just a special type of paper that turns black when heated. And connecting it to the Game Boy camera is as simple as using the link cable. With a simple press of the button, you can print out your photographic masterpieces. There it goes. So yeah, like with brand new, like regular thermal printer, instead of buying like new old stock Game Boy printer paper, your your picture quality can actually be really nice. Look at that. That's that's great. Okay, it might not be the best thing ever, but you gotta admit that is super cool. With some new high-quality thermal paper, the image quality you get is honestly pretty decent. Imagine going to a meetup during the 90s with your Game Boy that can take and print photos on the go. You've got like the ultimate icebreaker right there. Actually, there's a bit more to the print option. By pressing select, you get to change the printing exposure, as well as changing the photo frame into a WILD FRAME. That's Basically, wild. it's just a longer picture frame with more elaborate designs. It got some neat little SNES and N64 designs there. Coupled with the built-in B album photos, you can print out pieces of art like this. Beautiful! <laughs> and that about- Yeah, that's a thing you can print. Just direct from the Game Boy camera. How amazing. That's it for the view menu, at least for the stuff we can access for now. But before we move on to the minigames, there's still a lot more to see. Press the select button on the main menu and... Look at that, more options! Why they're hidden in a menu like this is beyond me, but let's check them out. Doodle is kind of a redundant option here, it's basically a shortcut to the painting and stamping tools that I've already covered. Link, as you can probably infer, lets you link two Game Boys together via the link cable and transfer photos between them. However, once you send a photo on its way, it's gone from your Game Boy camera, which kinda sucks. It probably wouldn't have hurt if it copied the photo instead of moving it entirely. There's also a print option, which, in addition to serving as a shortcut for printing photos, also lets you print out multiple photos at once for the rare occasion that you would want to do such a thing. Now these last two options here are kinda categorized in- There's like just so many options in this game, dude. I am covering all of them, for some reason weird way, as they both deal with putting your photos together in different ways. Which could probably go into the view menu just fine, but I digress. Edit contains two sub-options. Album lets you delete your photos in a quicker fashion, or copy your photos. Which in hindsight probably would've been useful for transferring photos without losing them, I guess. And animation lets you put together photos from both the A and B albums into a crude little piece of looping animation. Once you save it, you can then watch it by choosing the animation option in the view menu. Behold! Beautiful. Last but not- My masterpiece. Is you have special, which gives you another sub menu. Oh god, please, someone stop this music, please! Compose lets- That music is indeed loud, like, don't let it fool you. I turned it down in the video, no. Merge existing photos together by splitting them or overlaying them. Which sort of works, I guess? The low resolution just makes it hard to distinguish anything though. Now Hotspot is a pretty intriguing feature. It lets you place 5 different invisible but clickable spots on a photo. You can then set each spot to play a sound, screen effect, or transition to a different photo. Then you can interact with your hotspots on the view menu. Essentially, this lets you create semi-interactive point-and-click adventures with your Game Boy camera photos. This is a very unique idea, and if not for the limited storage on the Game Boy camera, people probably could have made some elaborate games with it. This is actually cool. Like, actually cool feature. Why is the Game Boy- why is this- I just can't believe, like, this Game Boy camera just has, like, so many dang... Re redundant but like super professional options in there. It's just- a, it's just a small digital camera. All it could do is- you could- they could have just had it, you know, like, you can take pictures, you can print them, and then that's about it. But, like, there's so much stuff in here for some reason, I can't believe it. It's a great value. Phew, now that was a pretty comprehensive look, wasn't it? But we still have one option on the main menu left. It's time to take a look at the minigames. Choose play and you'll immediately be thrust into Space Fever 2, the sequel to one of Nintendo's earliest arcade titles, Space Fever, which was basically a Space Invaders clone. At the beginning, two dips will float down, and shooting them will actually bring you to the other minigames the Game Boy Camera has on offer instead. But we're gonna jump into Space Fever 2 first. 
Instead of a Space Invaders clone like the prequel, this is just your run-of-the-mill top-down shooter. You can only move left and right and alternate between shooting one or two bullets. Pressing A obviously makes you fire a shot and pressing B... ...self-destructs your ship. Dead. Well, I hope you don't press the wrong button on accident. The gameplay is pretty straightforward, you just shoot the enemies and dodge their attacks. You can even shoot the enemy bullets to destroy them. Staying in the center and just mashing the A button is actually a pretty valid strategy, even though it's not a complete cheese. After a while, you get to face off against the level's boss, which is just a human face. Defeat it and you move on to the next level, with 3 levels in total that just loop. And the boss of the last level is... Hey, it's me! This is where the game face we've taken a while back comes into play, and you'll be able to see it used in the other games as well. It may make you look pretty stupid, but hey, that's the point of this whole thing in the first place. Moving on, shooting the spaceship with a B on it at the beginning of Space Fever 2 takes you to Ball. A port? Remake? Whatever. Of the original Game & Watch title, Ball. The difference being that the player now has a human face. If, for some reason, you've never tried this game before, the general gist is that you move your hands left and right to juggle the balls. If any of the- Who here has not actually played, like, a version of Game & Watch Ball? I'm pretty sure, like, a decent amount of people have actually already played this once before. The ground, then the game is over. Simple as that. You can choose between two pieces of background music and three different faces, the last of which is your custom game face. By the way, each time you juggle a ball, you get a single point. And to unlock some of the B album pictures, you have to score 500 to 1000 points. I'd imagine that would get really tedious and frustrating real quick. Yes, I spent 8 minutes juggling balls and got nowhere near the required score. Uh, also, uh... Don't have to laugh at me, you prick! The next- Yeah, I, I played uh, Ball on the Game Boy Camera for 8 minutes, and I'm pretty sure I put a link to that on uh, Patreon, so if you want to watch me- uh, Unedited 8 minutes of me playing Game & Watch Ball, uh, you can do that on Patreon. This isn't really a game per se, it's a DJ music making tool. At the beginning, you can choose to play a sample track or start a new track. There's also only one save slot, but don't worry too much about it because all you can do is create a looping track that's 16 beats long. Okay, that- I had to like spend a lot of time researching this interface. I had no idea what any of these things meant at first. But apparently it's a decent-ish music making tool. I'd be selling it a bit short. As this ridiculously complex editing screen shows, there's actually quite a few options on display. Basically, you move the cursor to the blank note that you wish to fill in. Then while holding A, choose the note you want to fill with from the piano keys. You have three different tracks that can play simultaneously, two music tracks and a noise track. And each also contains advanced options such as duty, envelope, and modulation. There's lots of stuff to tweak here to get your musical creation to sound right. I think some professional chiptune artists out there would appreciate this tool, ignoring the fact that it only creates short loops. After that, you can switch to the DJ screen, where you can remix your song by changing the tempo, switching tracks on and off, or adding in sound effects. The knife and final sound effect literally just plays London Bridges falling down note by note. Anyway, after tinkering with it for a small bit, the best I can do with such a short length is this bopping Donkey Kong remix. Now I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a maestro. Look at that. Check out that remix. Sick remix. I'll drop my SoundCloud link now. actually have one last minigame that has to be unlocked by getting a high score of at least 2,000 points in Space Fever 2. I guess that A button mashing trick finally comes into play, but once you get that high score, you unlock the final game. Run, run, run. This is a short minigame where you race against a mole and a bird by mashing A as fast as you can and jumping over hurdles by pressing up. It's actually decently challenging and also a great way to torture your thumb. This is harder than it looks. Like, if you're gonna play this on a Game Boy, on that small handheld with the small buttons, it's, it's like super hard to button mash over this. Of course, finishing the race in a certain amount of time is needed to unlock things like B album pictures. Also, when you get first place, you can mash A to raise the flag all the way at the awards ceremony. Yes, you can mash A to raise the flag. And it's also like the hardest button mashing I've ever done in the Nintendo... Hardest button mashing I've ever done in a Nintendo game. That's what I meant to say. And the, the following video clip is sort of an exaggeration, but you know, it's, it does kind of accurately capture how I feel trying to play that. 
but it's like really hard. And yeah, that that's that's a pretty accurate depiction of what I felt trying to raise that flag. Uh, yeah, it it that it, is actually genuinely challenging button mashing thing, especially when you're playing it on a GBA SP with those tiny button. After all of that, I think that is the last of what we can do and see on the Game Boy Camera. Psych! Pressing the start button and watching that psychedelic trip brings us to the options menu. Truly, I've saved the best for last. You have four options here. You can choose your user information and even view your unique user ID. As far as I know, it isn't utilized for anything special, but I could be wrong. You can My birthday is a secret. View records such as the number of photos you've taken, deleted, or transferred, your minigame high scores, and last but not least, the credits. The classic. Well, good to know Shigeru Miyamoto single-handedly designed and programmed the entire thing. Look at him dancing and showing off his monumental achievement. Actually, I'm not even completely sure if this guy is Shigeru Miyamoto. Almost everyone on the internet says that it's him, but from what I know, there is no solid conclusive evidence. And with the image quality, we may not know for sure for a good while. To unlock the actual credits, you have to get a score when of- will someone interview Miyamoto and ask him if he was dancing on the Game Boy Camera credits? At least 22 seconds in Run Run Run. And fun fact, the catchy credits tune that you get for your troubles is actually a song from Earthbound Beginnings. Banger. That's a good message. That's a cute message. Yeah, this is, this is an intentional musical easter egg. I kinda like it. One is HAL Laboratory, one is Game Freak though, so I'm not sure the correlation, but... And of course, after the credits have rolled, you still get to see Miyamoto dancing. Got this thing is weird and I love it. And with that, that is finally everything that the Game Boy Camera has to offer. Well, at least not literally. Even with my long rambling look at its features, there are still plenty of references, regional differences, and easter eggs hidden throughout the software that I don't have the time to fully detail. And to this day, the Game Boy Camera remains quite a popular camera for photography hobbyists. You have people attaching their own lens to the camera, using filters to take color photos like the old days of photography, and even creating special peripherals to save your Game Boy Camera photos onto an SD card. My god, those are expensive! Uh, so yeah, they made like tools to connect your Game Boy Camera to, like you connect it through the extension cable, pretend that you're printing something, and it saves it to an SD card, but honestly, dumping the save file is probably the cheapest way to do it. The thing is, there's still a pretty active community around the Game Boy Camera, and it is still fondly remembered by many, so it's a fascinating case of a weird Nintendo accessory that didn't really fail or fade into obscurity. With its robust features and quirky presentation all fit into a compact Game Boy cartridge, it's pretty much the perfect example of quirky innovation and squeezing the fun out of literally everything. Something that Nintendo still does to this very day. <laughs> I have to do it. That's a good ending. Uh, what save file dumpers exist for the Game Boy? Uh, okay, so normally I used I used to have uh, I, I I originally had a Retro Freak. Got got one for free actually, and it's like one of those you know multi consoles that you let you plug in uh, cartridges from multiple systems. You got uh, Famicom, you know, S Super Famicom, Genesis, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy. And that had the ability to dump Game Boy games, but for some reason that did not support the camera. So I had to like so right now I have uh N64 transfer pack, and then I use it 
with an N64 EverDrive, which there's a homebrew app that lets you dump Game Boy ROMs and save files from the transfer pack and save them on the EverDrive SD card so you could save them. And uh, it's been a pretty reliable way to dump saves. Uh, apparently, it's like a pretty accurate dumping method. So I guess I can dump original Game Boy games now. Okay, and also, I should probably also mention this because I, this did not, you know, long, long after this video was created, uh, the Nintendo Giga Leaks happened, which is like, you know, a year. Hey, the this month is the anniversary of that. How nice. But uh, yeah, from the 2020 Nintendo Giga Leaks, we found that there was an unused version of the Game Boy camera themed around Hello Kitty that never got released. And it was actually substantially different from the official version that we got. There was like mini games, there's in-game currency. I tried it a little bit. And like there's like decent amount there's like tons of different differences in there to basically it could warrant an entire video on it. But the thing is I can't read Japanese. Uh <laughs> but like, I tried a little bit of the Hello Kitty Game Boy camera and there was like some cool new like features in there. You can play mini games. There's like a ID card function. Like normally there's like the user profile on a Game Boy camera, but you can take like a photo of yourself and use it as your ID. You can even animate it. And then you can write a little bit of information, like a memo for each photo you take. It's sort of like a diary of sorts. I guess it's because it's geared towards girls or something because Hello Kitty, but like uh yeah it's a it's a it's a interesting version of the game or camera with its own unique features and it could be touched on in a video or something as a follow-up if i could ever find a time to figure it out or something yes that is interesting yeah game Boy camera that was a super deep dive like 20 minutes that did not feel like 20 minutes i like i went, I went into like every nook and cranny but uh I know, I know it probably wouldn't do quite as well as some of the more popular Game Boy Camera videos out there, but, you know, YouTube Gaming featured it on their Twitter. I made it big from this, I guess. I don't know, like, <laughs> thanks, YouTube, for that one time. <laughs> and then I got... <laughs> and then I got the Game Boy Camera. But Photo Dojo is another cool... Video. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is currently. If you look up, uh, this is a incognito profile. But if you look up Photo Dojo, I'm fairly sure if you sort by like view count. There we go. I have the most viewed video about Photo Dojo on YouTube right now. Guys, we did it. <laughs> And then the rest is all, like, the template ones that people uploaded, like, 11 years ago. And there's, like, 10k views. Oh, God. <laughs> but, yeah, we did it. Wow. Can you tell this game was released in 2008? <laughs> what is happening? Okay, I got plenty of things to talk about Photo Dojo because Photo Dojo is somehow one of those games I managed to get. Like obviously I did not have a DSI when it launched. I only I only played Photo Dojo on my 3DS. I'm pretty sure I got it through like a club Nintendo promotion or something for free. That's kind of how I got to know Photo Dojo and how it kind of became one of my first 3DS titles. And which is kind of why I still have memories of it, even though it did not I did not play it around the time it launched. I played it around 2011, 2012-ish. But you know, it's it kind of stuck with me. And after, you know, seeing Smash Brothers, I kind of wanted to do a video on Photo Dojo because I wanted to, you know, bring it back. And boy did I okay. <laughs> Yo, continuity? You'll love to see it. You know, taking low-res photos of myself with a Game Boy camera and putting them into different mini-games is cool and all, but I kind of want something more than that. Imagine if I could put myself in a fighting game. No, 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 no. I mean, put my actual self 
in a fighting game. Whoa! Uh, so, <laughs> obviously, I did not... I'm filming this all by myself, so, like, I'm doing this all in one take. I'm doing this all by myself. I had to hold the string myself, so I had to pretend someone else was dangling the cord from up top. Hi there. And, uh, yeah, basically, I had to do all these shots by myself. I had to pretend someone else was holding it for me, when in reality, I'm doing this by myself. Oh. Uh, also, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think this would be a last video for today because I kind of want to save PDI check for like a bang. We got, we got, we got a while though. So, uh, you random floating string in the sky. Yeah, uh, it is the random floating string in the sky is literally a random floating string in the sky. I originally wanted something more elaborate, you know, like a, like a rope or something. But literally, I looked around my apartment, and this is literally the only thing I could find that I could use to like wrap the DSi around. So it's literally just something I found. You know what? Forget about the whole everyone is here marketing gimmick that they used for Smash Ultimate. Back in 2009, Nintendo was already building the ultimate fighting game where literally anyone can join the battle. It's time to take a look at Photo Dojo. So, uh, there is no high quality logo of Photo Dojo out there before this. Someone very graciously offered to do a high quality vector recreation of the photo dojo logo for me for specific specifically for this video i did not ask them to do that i just i just i was just asking around to find to see if there was a high quality photo and then someone just whipped this up for me and i'm very grateful for that so now there is a high quality version of the photo dojo logo out there you're welcome Released for the Nintendo DSi in 2009 in Japan and 2010 in the West, Photo Dojo fully harnessed the power of the DSi's built-in cameras in order to deliver a deep and engaging fighting game experience. Funny. Just take photos of you and your friends and you both will be virtually fighting in no time. Nintendo was so confident in Photo Dojo's success that during the first month of its North American release, the game was completely free to download. Of course, at that time, I was a wee lad running a trash YouTube channel while anxiously waiting for Mario Galaxy 2 to release. Got that thing. <laughs> I can't believe... Why, why, why is my YouTube channel archived on the Internet Archive? My parents wouldn't let me upgrade to a DSi from my DS Lite, so I didn't get to experience it until two years later on my 3DS. Well, when you first start up the game, the first obvious thing to do is to create your very first fighter out of 13 photos and 10 different sounds. You can take photos on your own by using the inner camera, but to take photos of your full body, you have to prop the system up, which isn't really- is, Did anyone actually, ever, ever actually do this? I'm pretty sure, like, I feel like this would be super hard to do when you have to, like, match the outline, and you have to set up a timer, and then you have to do, prop the system up to do it yourself. A solution for the 2DS I'm capturing this footage on. Whoops. And yeah, I'm this is my capture card. Uh, my capture card is a 2DS. So I actually did have to get someone's help to, you know, do the shots of my body poses. Anyway, you'll be taking photos of all kinds of poses. Ping, attacking, taking damage, and even taunting and victory poses. And of course, you'll also record a bunch of voice clips to go with them. Huh. Ow. Look at him go! I'm really feeling it! Nice! I diagnose you with pain! Okay, so... <laughs> these are the lines. Uh, so obviously... Yeah, I said the line. Uh, so that last one, I diagnose you with pain, is actually a same, similar voice line that I used in my original photo dojo safe file obviously since i'm you know recording this footage on my capture card this is a fresh file i had to build my own fighter from scratch but you know on my 3ds excel i still have my original fighter back when it was 2012 or something and i was recording it was it 2012 i have no idea when i first played this game but i still have my original like fighter in my super dumb child voice and the uh, the voice line I picked for, you know, when selecting the fighter was, I diagnose you with pain. I forgot if there was any other, like, voice line I did that was dumb. 
I think I think I think my my victory quote was a winner is I. Because the funny meme. Uh, I'm not gonna share it with you guys though. So sorry. Sign your name and you get to choose from four different fighting styles. Every character in the game has the same move set, apart from a signature move and desperation move, which is determined by the fighting style you choose, ranging from a flurry of punches to a spin kick. And with that, our first fighter is ready to go. My body is ready. <laughs> Before we get into a match though, there is one more thing to do. Create a stage. Yes, in addition to having anyone join the battle, you can also fight on literally anywhere as a stage. This is the game that keeps on giving. Oh, can Smash Ultimate do that? Huh? No, it can't. Can it let you take any photo and use it as a stage? I don't think so. Take a photo of any location or even draw your own and the battlefield is ready. Of course, if you don't want to be stuck with fighting identical copies of yourself, you'll have to create more fighters. You can ask your friends or family to join in, or if you're a lazy person like me, just Google some photo dojo templates that people have posted online. They're uh... So uh, uh, of course I had to get multiple fighters in my save file. So in addition to uh, of course looking up these templates online, I also got, you know, the, my Patreon supporters at the time to, you know, submit their own fighters if they wanted to. And so I got a bunch of responses in. And some of the fighters you see in this video are from my Patreon patrons. Certainly something. Uh, you know what they say, limitation breeds creativity. Nintendo themselves also posted their own samples on the official Photo Dojo website, but unfortunately it is now defunct. I wonder if anyone actually preserved this? Apparently it's not on the ar it's not on the internet archive, because if it were then I would have seen it, but apparently I'm I'm pretty sure some of the template like the template that they they had like a template for sharing the you know uh yeah these templates are from the official website so nintendo like posted these so that you know uh nintendo posted these so people can make their own templates and then people can share them online through these means but i'm not sure about the templates the actual template fighters that nintendo had i don't think they exist i'm not sure i do i really do hope they're preserved though but from what i can remember they were not on the archive something uh go back. samples on the official photo dojo website but unfortunately it is now defunct well let's import this nice looking mario in i want to challenge the man himself with that done we can pick between two modes a versus match or a single player mode Yes, that's right, Photo Dojo even supports local multiplayer on a single system. Just have each player hold one side of the DS. This is a very cool control scheme that I think, like, <laughs> this is pretty innovative. Always wondered why not many games utilize this for multiplayer besides series like WarioWare. Anyway, pick a stage and soundtrack and in the immortal words of Pit, The fight is on! The gameplay is sort of like a fusion between traditional fighters and the simplicity of Smash Bros. Here we go, I am fighting Mar THE Mario! You're still locked to a flat plane depleting each other's health bars, but the controls are very simple. Depending on the side you're holding, you use the D-pad or the face buttons for movement, jumping and crouching, and use the shoulder button to attack. When you're standing still or in mid-air, you do a kick. Then, just like Smash Brothers, you can combine the attack button with other directions. Attack while moving forward and you'll throw a punch that's quicker but deals less damage. Do it while holding the opposite direction and you unleash a fireball, which can hit from a distance. Yeah, my fireball is curvy, apparently. But can be cancelled by another fireball or be leapt over. Crouch and attack and you perform a signature move, which is different depending on the fighting style that was chosen for the character. For example, I made my character do a flurry of punches. Yeah, I said, I, I say, think you can take me during my special move. <laughs> it's a good way to get in multiple hits, and the last punch has a slightly longer range as well. You can tap a button on your side of the touchscreen to taunt. My taunt is, I'm really feeling it, and my special move is, think you can take me. I got all, I got the power of memes on by, by my side. Which definitely cannot be abused for malicious purposes. But once you get down to having a sliver of health left, it changes into a desperation move that you can use once. Which also changes depending on fight- Where are the Photo Dojo tournaments? You missed it! Nintendo held official in Photo Dojo tournaments. Nintendo held one. There was a winner. Crowned a winner at the official Photo Dojo tournament. I want that era of esports to return. 
style. You can grow large with increased attack power, do a charging lunge, unleash multiple fireballs, and more. And that's the basics of Photo Dojo. It's incredibly simple to learn. Well, maybe a bit too simple. But if you got this game looking to get into a super deep and complex fighting game meta, you'd be looking in the wrong place. Well, I guess someone could theoretically build a tier list based on the different fighting styles or port melee to it. <laughs> Look, uh, I like this joke. Just like by some super cool coincidence, there was a. Just by some coincidence, some guy made a fox template. I think that was like the only fox template that existed. I added in the T post myself, I believe. I'm not sure if the original guy who made this saw. I think I think the guy who made this saw this video. I think they did, and they left a comment or something. I think they did. Uh, whatever. Despite how gimmicky it might seem, the idea of having literal depictions of you and your friends fighting each other while blurting random one-liners is still a pretty entertaining idea. And there's also a very thin layer of fighting game strategy involved here. Different attacks have different ranges, some have startup and ending lag, etc. At its core though, it's essentially the most basic fighting game ever, but with trademark Nintendo charm injected into it. Just like some of Nintendo's other small camera focused offerings like WarioWare. This is the only time I'm ever acknowledging WarioWare Snapped on my channel. Snapped and Face Raiders, Photo Dojo will at least offer you an afternoon of a Yeah, there, there's all the fighters I got for the video. Uh, three of those, I believe, were Patreon submissions. ...with your friends. Just don't end up getting stuck doing this. Well, before I forget, I should talk about the single player mode as well. In this mode, you're tasked with defeating 100 CPU characters as you advance through the stage. Most enemies can be taken care of with a simple kick, but some of them have other patterns, such as doing jump kicks and shooting fireballs that shake things up a little, though not by much. You also got some large and tiny enemies scattered in there as well. If you successfully defeat 100 enemies, then you get to view the credits. It's a pretty bare bones experience, but if it is any consolation, there are still a few unlockable secrets up this game. There's unlockables sleep. in this game? Wow! If you clear the single player mode, you will unlock a bonus track to use in battles, which is the cheery fighter editing music. Wow. To be honest, it's one of the more memorable tracks in this game besides the title theme, so it ain't that bad of a reward. Also, once you create four fighters, you unlock a special versus mode that can be accessed by choosing the option while holding select. Basically, it just makes everyone go Super Sonic style. Huh? And curb. that's it for the unlockables. It nicely uh, rounds I, photo. Then pause the video again. But yeah, I, I just kind of like how there's a turbo mode. But yeah. Sonic style. Huh? And that's it for the unlockables. It nicely rounds Photo Dojo up into a fun little mini game, but beyond that, it doesn't have too much lasting appeal. I can think of quite a few additions that could have improved this replayability and appeal, such as allowing for CPU versus matches or even just letting people more easily share their own fighters, besides snapping them off of internet templates. Though that last part I could understand not having, given Nintendo's uh, <coughs> family friendly image. <laughs> yeah, the classic Nintendo strategy of, you know, not having any online sharing and let just just letting people do it online so you don't have to deal with the hassle of moderating the content. Overall, Photo Dojo is a fun little bite-sized experience. While the actual fighting game is pretty bare bones, it was never really the core appeal of the game. The fun came from mixing and matching your friends and even fictional- There's the Photo Dojo credits theme by the way, and it's a banger. ...characters in a duel and see who would come out on top. An idea that people certainly would have entertained before Smash Brothers introduced the concept of me fighters. Even when they're already a thing, I'll admit that seeing a photo of myself flying around and unleashing punches and fireballs is a fairly amusing sight. I'm sure quite a lot of people had fun with it when it was released for free for a limited time. But 10 years later, it's become another small footnote in Nintendo's history of releasing small but quirky games. It's still available on the Nintendo 3DS eShop for only 2 US dollars. So if you're interested in giving this little piece of Nintendo history a try, feel free to do so. It's only and $2, dollars, dude. Hear about your memories of this game if you have any, so let me know in the comments. Well, that's about it for Photo Dojo. Virtually fighting photos of real people is a neat novelty and all, but I'm ready to go back to playing some Smash Ultimate. 
I just wish there was a way to actually place myself in the action besides, like, me fighters. Coming up next, uh, possibly a contender for the dumbest joke on my channel. Hmm. Yo, what? They added Labo VR support to Smash Ultimate? Uh, things that age like wine? So sorry, this joke went too far. I didn't mean for it to end like this. Uh, every person makes mistakes, and I hope you will forgive me. I will never, ever repeat this mistake ever again. Good. It's okay. I can't believe I predicted Labo VR in Smash Ultimate. <laughs> yeah, Pichu is okay. I said that. <laughs> I wonder if the guy who I wonder if the guy who made it like saw the. I'm pretty sure they did. Also, hey, everyone finally like, remembers this game. Like, I'm I I it, it did exactly what I wanted it to do. I wanted to do a I wanted to do a photo dojo video because I just realized, hey, no one's made a video on photo dojo or a serious full blown video on photo dojo, and now I've have, and it's uh, yeah. Did did the guy ever see it? Like I I, I want to see it like. Uh... Yes. There we go. Approval from the guy who made the fox template. We did it. Uh, but yeah, so now this is the most viewed video about Photo Dojo on YouTube, and I am proud of that. Although it could, it could, it could be more. <laughs> Obviously, there is also uh, but yeah, Photo Dojo, really cool topic. Glad I got to finally cover it. Maybe some background on PDI check. Like I think. I, I did hear about PDI check when it was first released and I was like, oh, that's weird. And then I just kind of brush it off. And then the reason that this video even existed is because angry, a friend of mine and a patron of the channel just offered to buy it for me if I made a video about it. And here we are. But like what? What this video ended up being is quite like an uh, interesting to story, and you know it's it's not like it's not something like meme run where it's like, you know, oh it's it's kind of curious because it's on the eShop, but no, it's just a mediocre bad game. But like this this game has this app actually has a decent backstory, which is kind of why I wanted to take a look at it. Like the more I research, I was gonna I, I at first my mindset was definitely gonna be like oh it's ninety nine dollars this tear into it because it clearly look at the screenshots it's clearly not worth $99 and then I actually did the research and I was like oh it's an eye tool okay I don't know I don't know if like okay I'll, 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 I'll keep my like detailed thoughts in the middle but uh <laughs> let's go PDI check it's 10 let's go oh the quality is dumb why is YouTube defaulting to 480p please don't do that Oh boy. What can you buy with 100 US dollars? 70 cheeseburgers? 200 packs of ramen? A night at a motel? A really cheap smartphone? Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Team Sonic Racing? Great game. Or <laughs> you can purchase PDI check. Yes, you're seeing that right. Released on May 23rd uh, of 2019, PDI Check costs a whopping 99 US dollars and 99 cents on the 3DS eShop. You guys missed the, you guys missed the chance when uh, PDI check went on sale for five US dollars. So now I have legally bought PDI check twice. Thank, <laughs> I'm supporting eye research. Have you ever met anyone who has used PDI check for, like like in real life? 
or online have you met people no no uh i think because uh it was supposed to be for you know third world countries or something like that like i've only seen the videos that uh, the clinic posted i'm not sure how widespread pdi check actually is maybe you can look it up now and see but you know there's video evidence of them going to other countries and using PDI checks. So apparently, apparently it, they, they're doing it. Also eligible for up to 500 points. I think that's like $5. Is that? <laughs> that's like $5 each off credit for, for, for buying PDI check. Now at this point, you're probably already planning on memeing the heck out of it, <laughs> saying stuff like, who'd pay a hundred dollars for something that barely resembles a game on the eShop? Uh, great ran. Uh... <laughs> no, I, I just typed this out for dumb. But I'm going to give this app the context it so desperately needs. PDI Check is not a game, but an app intended for medical use, and it's already been used by doctors for quite a while before its eShop debut. It's brought to you by one Dr. Robert Arnold, an ophthalmolo eye doctor in the Alaska. Great joke. <laughs> I still don't know how to pronounce that. Children's Eye and Strabismus Clinic. I'm gonna spare you the rest of the medical terms, but basically, Dr. Arnold here specializes in eye examinations and medical care. What? This man is uh, this man is professional. I, I don't know my I don't know my medical knowledge, but you know, 20, 20 plus years of experience, fluent in four languages. Like man, along with him is Alex Demargian. Apologies if I pronounced that wrong. Who is the main programmer behind the app? He's worked on licensed video I games. I can't make fun of these people. These guys are, all have perfectly good intentions. What? Like, no. I'm not gonna... Yeah. Before, but his background in technology and humanities gave him the interest in helping to develop PDI Check. Well, for me, it was always a dream to make a Nintendo game since I was a kid. Being a collaboration between mm. multiple eye doctors, this is certainly a neat idea. To use a game system as a tool to evaluate different aspects of our eyesight, such as visual acuity, color vision. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm gl I'm glad people cat caught onto this. I mean, you know. Uh, apologies to the colorblind people in the audience, but uh, yeah. <laughs> and of course, stereoscopic vision. I mean, it adds up, right? Kids are more likely to be drawn to game systems. I can't believe like. The only footage I am able to find of these 3DS commercials is like this low because they don't get posted on Nintendo's website. Also, like side tangent, but like Nintendo occasionally removes their marketing materials from their, like the trailers and commercials from their official YouTube page, and like it's a bummer, dude. Because like you know, you know something, you know something like uh, the the Mario Odyssey live action commercial they did with jump up superstar like that's that's no longer in the on the official website you can only find that from like re-uploads by other channels and like eh, i don't like that i i, I you know i kind of want to preserve these commercials you know i don't know why they want to remove it from their official channels but uh maybe some guy out there is like preserving it but like some of these 3ds commercials now only exist in like this 240b hellscape <laughs> Even some of the early 3DS games, I don't think you can still find the commercials on Nintendo's website, uh, Nintendo's channel anymore, but, uh, yeah, Just a little thing that bumps me out. The 3DS has a 3D screen that's perfect for testing stereoscopic vision, and it's not like it hasn't been used for other non-entertainment purposes before. The 3DS audio guides used in the Louvre Museum come to mind, and it's already been utilized in medical studies. Yeah, I love this medical study. Wait, which one is this one? Uh... Aims to exact the specific effect that 3D gameplay has on a control of the eye. Uh, <sighs> yeah, it's something like, uh, you know, actually playing with 3DS with the 3D effect on can actually help your stereoscopic vision, actually. <laughs> and then, I just kind of like the irony. Remember when people were paranoid that the 3DS would destroy your vision like the Virtual Boy did? Now an eye doctor is using it to perform eye checks on children. Look at how far the thing has come. Yeah, I know like some people, I think there are accounts of like some people who have like problems with stereoscopy. Stereoscopy. I don't know how to pronounce that. Stereoscopy? No, whatever. 
but like people have problems seeing in 3D and actually playing on a 3DS actually does help improve it somewhat. <laughs> so uh kind of funny because at first people were afraid it was going to be like a virtual boy 2.0 and then burn your children's eyeballs or something. There's of course other traditional tools that can be used to do what PDI check does. But using the 3DS as a cheaper all-in-one testing solution seems to be what Dr. Arnold and his team are striving for. I think for. later in the video I do like a I do like a comparison between like the typical price of the eye testing tools that we just saw in that other video. Like testing stereoscopy and then comparing it to the PDI check price of $99. Heck, he published multiple studies with his software and even went to a clinic located in the war zone in Burma. It's a war zone clinic! Like, dude, these guys. To test it with the locals there. So I'd say he's pretty confident in PDI check as a medical tool. I, you can't make this up. These guys have good intentions. I can't I can't make fun of this, dude. Like, this is legitimately heartwarming. And I know the actual effectiveness, but you know, there's a there's a there's a written study on it. I, I'm not gonna argue with science, am I? Maybe like there's like further um, tests that have been done since then, but you know. Naturally, he'd release his work on the eShop so that other eye doctors can benefit from using it too. But then you inevitably attract the gaming crowd that goes, Oh my god, what is this and why is it $100? There's a forum on the PDI Check website where the only post that's not from Dr. Arnold asks him why his software costs that much. And this is coming from a user with the name Vision Fan. <laughs> yeah. Vision Fan 1985. This man, this, I didn't make this up. <laughs> this is a perfect joke. Great question, he says. We intend this game to be used in eye clinics. The game replaces conventional clinical tools that cost the eye doctor about $500 for each exam room. Five new 3DS XL and a Fellas, isn't it great to see things? Copy of PDI check costs a doctor around 300 US dollars. So the math appears to add up. See, Nintendo should have just released, you know, the, the new 3D, the small one. Just make it cheaper for, you know, doctors to do their thing. Now, obviously, I'm not a medical expert or anything. I'm just a guy minding my own business looking for neat Nintendo obscurities. I mean, this does technically qualify since it is the most expensive thing you can buy on the 3DS eShop as of this video. Now, is it the most expensive thing you can still buy on the 3DS eShop? That I'm that I'm not sure. Like, 99, what, what other thing on the 3DS eShop could be 99 US dollars? Uh, aside from, like, you know... I know there's like special editions on the Switch eShop that are probably over $99. Switch software can probably fit that. Like I know something like the Pokemon Sword and Shield double pack could be around that price, but I don't know. I don't know about 3DS software. <laughs> but is it really worth a hundred US dollars just for me to review some sort of eye testing software? Good blank stare, guys. <laughs> I'll record it. Thank god I have a capture card so I can get this all on video. I'm buying PDI check at 12 a.m. in the morning on August 17. <laughs> and yeah, I did legitimately have to buy this because uh the you might think you could just pirate it, right? But you know, no one has pirated PDI check as of that video, <laughs> when that video came out, you cannot download PDI check from the internet. Uh, yeah, there, there were there were people who have downloaded it before. There were ratings for it on the eShop, but as far as I know, there was no. I did kind of submit some info about it to some preservation groups, but uh, I probably someone else dumped it. I'm not sure if it, I probably wasn't my copy because I didn't I didn't specifically dump it to you know pirate it or anything. I just kind of like you know uh, wanted to share the information about it on data sites. Uh, PDI check is still the most expensive thing on the eShop. <laughs> okay then. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, for those who don't know. Uh, that is the, I believe that is the default banner sound for 3DS apps used for things like the dev menu.
and they did not change it at all. Uh, is like I think that's like the I don't know if there's any other 3ds eShop app that when you open it, it still plays the default developer banner sound, which is kind of funny. Let's play it again. Yes, yes, it is. I'm gonna pause the video right here to tell you guys that without the generosity of my fellow patron Angry, I wouldn't be sitting here making this video. He actually volunteered and followed through on my joke tweet, so thank you so much. Uh, Angry is in the server. Go ahead and ping him. I think that would be a very funny joke. Uh, shoutouts. Give give him my shoutouts. <laughs> He's gonna be so confused. Your sacrifice will hopefully not be in vain. It was not. I'm gonna say that right now. So, this is PDI check. Let's dive in. Oh, uh, something about that, that shot. I originally wanted to do it where it's like, oh, so this is PDI check. And then I just kind of like tapped the icon without looking at the 3DS itself. But then I kept misclicking. So, uh... I kept misclicking, so I had to do the final take where I had to look at the system. Just a small... And I don't know why I still remember that. So, this is PDI check. Let's dive in. As I mentioned, PDI check aims to measure three different aspects of eyesight. Acuity, color, and stereoscopic vision. At yeah, I love how, uh, yeah, the I beginning, how you'll go through a warm-up or calibration round of sorts. Use the touchscreen to pick the circle that's a different color. The U shape that's pointing a different direction. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I you can see the captions. I already corrected myself on this dumb mistake. But uh, it's called a Landolt C, and I only realized that after uh making this video because I do not know my medical terms. So I keep saying U shape, U shape. It's it's actually I shouldn't even say U shape. It's supposed to be a C shape. Like, come on. Anyway, yeah, it's called a Landold C, so you know, the more you know. ...and the circle that pops out to you in 3D. Oh yeah, also because, you know, my capture card... My capture card is a 2DS. And I kind of had to buy the app itself on the 2DS so I could, you know, record the process of me buying it. But then, of course, to try out the 3D feature, I had to, you know, put, dump it and put it on my regular 3DS. So, in the way, homebrew had to be involved. Oop. Success! Yeah, I... Great model. I wonder, I wonder if they, like... I don't think they handmade it. I pro it's probably from some... Made from... It's probably a pre-made model. No idea, like... I guess most of this game's budget didn't go into the visual presentation, despite it being sold for $100. Then again, it's a tool, not a game, and I shouldn't judge too hard. <laughs> yeah, that that circle thingy is like when during the initial test, when you don't respond for a long enough time, the game just like does that circle thing. It's like, dude, it's this one. Are you blind? No. Okay, but yeah, it just kind of like tells you to tap that. But I fear the presentation could still use a little more polish to at least make it more attractive to children who are the ones actually taking the tests. Anyway, you then get to choose one of the three actual tests to undergo. Love that, like, nearest neighbor scaling on that. I don't know if that's, like... I don't. I think it's actually native resolution, but... It's just because it's 3DS footage blown up, but... <laughs> oh. Also, since this is an eye test of all things, I feel like I shouldn't be doing this with glasses on. I feel more vulnerable already. That is In cursed. I am never doing that again. Stereo, which is a test for stereoscopic vision, one of the four circles will slowly pop out of the screen, and you'll have to select which one it is as fast as possible. Obviously, you can't see the effect in this 2D footage, but you can still see the circle grow in size just a tiny bit. This, this game is playable in 2D because the circle grows in size, and you can tell it. <laughs> you can tell when it does. I think, like, actually, it, pro it probably shouldn't do- it shouldn't grow in size, probably. I think like the best way would just be to adjust the depth of the circle itself rather than having it physically get closer to the camera, which I think is kind of the implementation they did here, but uh Yeah, it's kind of weird. If you pick the wrong one, you're just told to try again. I don't know why this girl is clapping in response to me failing a task though. 
Congratulations! You screwed up. Next, <laughs> that, that thing. Was... That, that, that I mean, you know, that's a good, good. That's a good basis for a joke. Don't don't use it as a meme, please. T. This tests how clear your vision is. The small to large text kind of feels like a screaming, like acuity. No. You're supposed to look at the screen with only one eye, and then pick which shape is facing the different direction it's as all four slowly zoom into see. the screen. It's a lot easier than your typical eye chart, though. I feel. I'm kind of. I'm kind of wondering, like, what is this? Like the does the resolution of the 3ds play a factor in this? Because obviously, if you like stare at the screen, like stare right up at the screen, you can easily tell which shape, which uh, which C is facing the wrong direction. But like, you're supposed to like stare at it from a distance, right? Like, and you know, use only one eye. I'm kind of wondering, like, you know. If resolution plays a part in the effectiveness of this tool, unless there's like a specific distance you have to hold the screen away from, Dr. Arnold doesn't really seem to give more specifics. Lastly, color. It's interesting to note that this appears to specifically screen for red green color blindness. Instead of the hmm. obvious choices presented at the beginning, now all four circles start off the same color, and one of them will slowly fade into a different shade. That's actually a decent test of color blindness. This one is definitely the more challenging test out of all three. And that's it! In the normal procedure, I assume you take each test multiple times to get an a- I love the Wii Fit music I chose here. <laughs> average. Then you can tap on results to get your scores on each test reported back to you as raw data. So what I didn't actually really like dive into like what this raw data actually means. It kinda just says like, you know, uh two passes, how many tasks are like start time offset? There's like offset arc response time, I think is the actual like data. Yeah, I know. Maybe like if if you buy if you like get the software, shouldn't it normally come with some documentation, or is that just how all eye tools work? So any eye doctor who buys the software doesn't need any more explanation. They know how to use this data to do stuff with it. Kind of wondering that. Including stat, uh, there is like a there's no like a built-in manual for this game. If you're wondering, by the way, you open it and it only shows you the support information and contact information. That's such as your response time and how many times the test has been passed. At this point, I presume the eye doctor performing the test will have to analyze the results themselves to actually make any sort of diagnosis. And yeah, that's mm. the meat of PDI check. And we we're like, yeah, seven It does <laughs> utilize the 3D effect and interactivity of the 3DS in ways that traditional tools wouldn't, such as dynamically changing the size and color of objects instead of just throwing a ton of tests your way and seeing which of them you have trouble with. <laughs> But now I have to- What? Okay. I forgot about that bit. Just throwing a ton of tests your way. As well as an R. What? What? I think I hit a message in there. Yeah, I hit a message in that- I hit a message in that R chart. Uh, if you can- if you can figure it out. <laughs> I don't know how- I don't know if many people actually caught that. Uh... But yeah, there's a hidden message in there. I won't spoil it, but yeah. And seeing which of them you have trouble with. But now I have to wonder, is it really that viable as a medical tool? Now, just a disclaimer, I am in no way medically trained, and what follows is just me speculating and doing what is probably flawed research. But Dr. Arnold did say that while a 3DS and PDI check cost around 300 US dollars, traditional for equipment that tests the same things would normally cost 500 dollars. So, let's see if that's really the case. Oh my god. Now, for testing color vision and acuity, eye charts and color blindness tests aren't too expensive, at least from what I've seen on Amazon. But if uh, what is this list price? Yeah. Uh, the list price is $500 and the price is $24.99, so I save 400 US dollars. Is that just what? perpetually on sale is this like a is this like a scam tactic like does it is it perpetually on sale or is it like what are are these professional use like eye chart books but then i did mention like it was kind of <laughs> ridiculous to order something like this from amazon so
Of course, for doctors to actually make a diagnosis using these, I imagine they'd also have to buy additional materials like special glasses and lenses, and also they wouldn't purchase these things from Amazon. As I do not know if Amazon... <laughs> do I doctor spider equipment on Amazon? Maybe? I don't know. I still don't know, actually. For testing stereoscopic vision, traditional tools include things like the Titmus Stereo Test, which uses things like vectographs and free- I have no idea what these tools are supposed to- I, never, I don't think I've ever took one of these tests. Maybe? Like, it's a- it's a fly. I forgot- I forgot what this test is supposed to do. Like, obviously, it comes with 3D glasses, so... It's probably something to do with that. <laughs> and 3D glasses, and they cost- whoa! You know what, maybe that $100 price is kinda justified. You know, uh, you know, this is $285. Uh, for, uh, the, the, the stereoscopic book thingy and the glasses. Hmm. I mean, I'm not sure how much it actually, you know, how much it costs to make versus, you know, how much it costs, like, how much it sells for. I don't know if there's, like, a discrepancy between it, but, you know, eh. something to think about. Of course, after seeing this, some indie developer out there can probably oh my God, post I'm the so same petty, thing dude, like... <laughs> and claim that selling this for hundred dollars is a <laughs> line robbery. But I can sort of see where the team over at Ace that thing in PowerPoint. Really? Wow, I forgot I did that. This is coming from during their international test drives with PDI check as early as August of last year. Look at that kid back in there, just lying on the floor, chilling, dude. Like, <laughs> what is he playing? Is he playing a free to yes? they did discover that it held quite a bit of advantages over using traditional equipment to evaluate yeah, so they kind of like used both traditional tools and PDI check just kind of comparing the two I'm guessing in effectiveness I think that's what the study was about anyway I'm not sure Sight. for one the 3ds is definitely a lot more portable also, the fact that the patient directly interacts with the test interface with the touchscreen means that they can complete it much faster than traditional <laughs> methods. And it doesn't require doctors to explain a lot of instructions to international patients. Thus, <laughs> I love, I love how the most kid, if you look at... <laughs> doctors to explain a lot of instructions to international like, oh, patients. <laughs> you're gonna tap the touchscreen. Uh, yeah. Aside from that, I think there's not much, uh... Not much in the bit, not much, not much barriers between communication aside from that point, but you know, don't tap the top screen. Eliminating yes, most yeah, of the language that. barrier. And these are totally points I can get behind. If they say it's working for them, then I'm glad that more people in developing. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that guy is tap, trying to tap it with the. Yeah, uh, I don't know if they fought that one through, but you know, you know maybe, well, maybe with the switch, it got, no. <laughs> Uh, in countries have a much easier access to tools like these. That's why did Nintendo never make a DS that you know have two ta two touchscreens? Just like you know, it's been like an eternal problem with people trying to tap the touchscreen, tap the top screen. Just make a DS with two touchscreens. Come on, it's e it's that easy. Screen for eye problems. On the other hand, though, does the app have to cost a hundred dollars? This interactive multiple choice game will be free for doctors that work. So yeah, there is the news report on this thing, which is kind of like where the interview footage with uh, the programmer Alex, yeah, Alex the Margin comes from. So in third world countries, but it'll cost doctors here in the states about ninety nine dollars. Of course, hmm. Doctor Arno is selling this as a professional tool for other doctors, so I'm sure I can't believe Lant. It's a land, yeah, land of sea. There's, it's even in the, it's even in the video. I just kind of missed it for some reason. Good. Of course, Dr. Arno is selling this as a professional tool for other doctors, so I'm sure their workplaces can definitely afford something like this. But I personally don't think that this took that much effort to program to make it worth a hundred dollars. Hmm. Then again, I don't know that much about the R and D that actually went into this. Or maybe they just wanted to discourage your average customer from buying it. This has been disproven since, you know, the app went on sale. <laughs> so... Considering you probably won't be able to diagnose yourself with the raw data it spits back at you. In the end, you can be the judge on whether or not it's truly overpriced. Nevertheless, it's a medical tool that does its job. Should you buy it for yourself? No. No, heck no. Save the money for buying two Switch games instead.
Wow. But for the medical industry, this does appear to be a viable tool. A lot of people crap on the 3DS's 3D effect for being a useless gimmick, but it's legitimately cool to see it being utilized for purposes like this. Yo, keep defending the 3DS 3D effect until the day I die. That's the fact now. Of course, it's not without its flaws, especially presentation-wise. But if PDI check is- Can we get PDI check remastered? Can we get that? Robert Arnold, I'm gonna get you some programmers to make a- Make a remastered version of the game. It's truly able to help this many people in other countries check their eyes without the expense of more professional equipment. I'd say that's a net positive for the world. This is a good conclusion to draw from this, by the way. So. So, good job to Dr. Arnold and his team over at Alaska. Now personally, I have no problem seeing 3D images, so I'm just gonna indulge myself in 3D gaming for a little bit longer. The thing is, I've been playing 3DS games for almost 8 years, and the Virtual Boy still makes my eyes bleed. Maybe I should take a look at another interesting application of 3D in gaming. I'm totally not foreshadowing my next oh. core video that I've been working on for the past two months. Uh... Yeah, about that. <laughs> so, you know, I was, I was kind of foreshadowing my uh, video on the Famicom 3D system. I was working on it for the past two months. I, oops, accidentally. <laughs> I was working on it. That was August of 20... And then, I, I, and then it took me until June of 2020 to release it. Good job, me. I'll talk more about like the wolves that went into making that. <laughs> This is a I'm totally pain. not foreshadowing my next core video that I've been working on for the past two months. Uh, yeah, Famicom 3D System was a weird video to work on, but that was PDI check. It turned out really well. Uh, shout out to Angry once again, but you know, yeah, and Dr. Robert Arnold did respond to the video. Uh, thanks for your careful review of PDI check. We believe that video games can be bad or good for kids depending on content. PDI check currently evaluates vision, but we also developing games to make treatment of amblyopia easier and more fun for kids. So I think they're working on something else. I didn't mean to search. I didn't look up. Search Google for Dr. Robert Arnold. See what he's up to these days. <laughs> Should I be doing this? Is he is he doing something new? What is he working on? Well, yeah. Uh, even as like even this thing on the Alaska Children's Clinic mentions, like you know, he's doing PDI check. There's nothing new on the. There's nothing new on the site though. So yeah, it could be. Oh no, they removed the vi. Oh. Oh yeah. Okay. So this is the, this is the description document. Kind of shows you like you know. I mean, this looks, I mean, you know, this looks serious enough that, you know, I, I, I can't believe that there are good reasons to sell this for $99. You know, I am not an eye doctor, so at the end, I can't make the final call on whether or not, you know, unless I hire another eye doctor, unless I, I interview an eye doctor, but no one's going to do that. <laughs> I'm not that crazy. So, you know, yeah, that was a PDI check. That was cool. Uh, and then, yeah, it took me like three core videos later to do get to the video I was teasing to. <laughs> but yeah, Robert Arnold, good job. Oh, look at the. Yeah, there he is, Bob Arnold. Good job. You guys did not go and harass him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, what is he doing? Whoa. What? Why is he going moose hunt? Ro Arnold! <laughs> Arnold's going moose hunting in Alaska? <laughs> what is this development? Well, where is he going, dude? <laughs> Whoa! He's in a helicopter! <laughs> He's in a helicopter! Yo! Go get him, Arnold! What the. <laughs> Oh, it's not a helicopter, it's a plane! It's a mini plane! Yo! <laughs> I'm 
I'm getting sidetracked. What is that? <laughs> We're just setting up camp in the wilderness. He's filming this, right? He's the cameraman. <laughs> Not no, just like. Oh god, he's gonna go like. Oh, oh, there it is. Look at that. You see that? Oh, he's gonna wait, wait, can, wait. Can I show this? Can he? Can he show this on YouTube? <laughs> can he, is he allowed to show this? He's not gonna kill him, right? <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, it's hunting. It's fine. Oh, there he is. Oh, oh, the tension is rising. Oh, oh dear. Whoa. Wait, no, is that like a? We got him. We got him. We got him. Oh, okay. It's like a... Oh. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Alright. Got it. And then they're going... We're looking for bear food. My man. Well, I... I... Okay. And then they went fishing? Okay. Whoa, look at that. My man is living a... What is this music, dude? <laughs> so good. Alright, alright, alright. Um... Rafting with Jeremy Davis. Who's Jeremy Davis? He is... Okay. Alright. The best tasting moose are colorblind! <laughs> Is that a? F is that real? <laughs> is that a real fact? Can you fact check that? Damn. Ouch. <laughs> Coming from an eye doctor. <laughs> what is that? I have no idea if that's real, dude. <laughs> I was like, he's an eye doctor. Can I get a trust? Him? <laughs> I I was not expecting to. <laughs> Uh, play Nintendo. Uh, oh, I got some things to say about play Nintendo. All right. Um. So uh, I don't think a lot of like there isn't a lot of uh other YouTube videos that are about uh play Nintendo, but like there's only the channel itself. We'll we'll get to like whether or not the channel has been uh, has been updated lately. But, uh, yeah. Also, thank God, uh, YouTube never marked this channel, marked this video as for kids. So, nice. <laughs> also, why is Paper Mario in the... Alright, let's, let's just begin. Whoa. So the really big core video is still being worked on and Halloween is just around the corner. So you know what that means, it's time to get sidetracked. Oh yeah, plenty of like funny like on camera memes for this one. With a Halloween special. Or it would be one, but I have like next to no Halloween decorations around here. But uh, thankfully I heard of this amazing website where you can find Halloween themed Nintendo merchandise for practically free. So uh, let's go check it out. Is this music why they marked it as Paper Mario? <laughs> kind of funny if that was the case. Uh. Wow, okay. Um, this shot. I mean. I don't know why, like, I printed those things, made it specifically for this video. And they were, like, barely visible in the background. And also, the fact that I tied this one into Halloween is, like, a pure coincidence. I just kind of did that on the spot. What's on the right? It's like, uh, Luigi's Mansion, uh. You know, you know, it's Dark Moon, right? Is it Dark Moon? No, it's Luigi's Mansion 3. Because, you know. But it's like, 
it's just like a mansion backdrop and then you can stick like different pictures of ghosts on there and they kind of like pop out because you print them separately and something like that uh the left is like uh <laughs> it's supposed to be a pumpkin carving guide but i just kind of printed it out and just put it there <laughs> because it was luigi's mansion themed that's a boo garden it's way too short i, I like in my mind this 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 shot looked way cooler but i didn't have enough room for you know <laughs> this is what you ended up with kind of like fits the tone also the the guiji mask also originally had the entire face but I cut it off so I could do the whole funny I bought like an entire pack of party accessories like cheap party accessories with like it's not just the party blower there's also like a hat there's also like a a whistle it's like a super cheap party I still have it actually <laughs> because I don't yeah, somehow I still have I don't know what I'm gonna use it for but apparently yeah alright let's back up a bit Child-oriented content on the internet has always been a fairly fascinating subject to examine. Back in the early days of the World Wide Web, discovering new content might just mean hearing about interesting websites from others on the playground, oh. or clicking on mysterious links in online chat rooms and message boards. This is my favorite, <laughs> favorite easter egg I've ever done. Probably this is the best. This is the best like blink and you'll miss it thing I've ever put in my videos. <laughs> if you've never went to this web page, you should go check it out. Think it pretty cool, Sin. Maybe you're smart enough to use a search engine, or you're just a big fan of different kid-friendly TV channels, so you decide to visit their website and are suddenly opened up to a digital world with tons of games and activities. So I I didn't uh of course. Being knowing that you know there's a difference between my what I experienced as a kid and what most people in the U.S. experience as a kid, I kind of made like a Twitter thread uh, asking like what kind of online sites you guys used to go to when you were kids, and you know it's kind of the, mostly the same things like you know online flash games. Besides online flash games, it was usually the sites that I shown here in this video. This is the Cartoon Network site, I believe. Uh, Nowadays, it almost feels like there's only two extremes when it comes to content for children. Either you're old enough to just get into whatever viral trend all the other ki we gotta kids are into, or you're way too young for the modern web, so you just watch kids' cartoons on YouTube all day. Nope, we are not discussing that. <laughs> I am not going to open this can of worms today. I'm glad. <laughs> Is this why the video was not marked as for kids? Like, look, I know, I know, that quote, that that topic is an interesting one to examine, in terms of you know talking about internet culture and the effect it has on children. Uh, but it is not my forte, and you don't. I don't think I will be examining it and talking about it myself anytime soon. Uh, you can feel free to look it up if you're. Uh... What I am going to talk about though is Nintendo. You know, one of the most family-friendly brands you can think of in the gaming space. And what better thing for a family-friendly brand to do than establish a section on the internet tailored just for kids? <laughs> I'm sorry. This shot is amazing. Can I rewind that? Can I rewind that? Family-friendly brand to oh, do that kid. That kid just wants to like high-five Mario and look what Mario does. Establish a section on the internet tailored just <laughs> for kids. <laughs> 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 That kid got denied. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> a lot of people tend to forget that Nintendo actually has an online space dedicated to child-friendly content called Play Nintendo. It's even in the navigation bar of their official website. I believe it still is, so, you know. So of course, as a college student with nothing better to do, why not give it a look just <laughs> for the sake of it being a lesser-known part of Nintendo history? I think this is like a... Where did I find this logo? I'm not sure. It was somewhere. It was a vector graphic, so I could scale it up. But it took me a while to find a higher quality logo. I just remember this being a bit more effort. I did. It was not like Photo Dojo, where someone just went out went out of their way to make a logo for me. But this is official. But kind of had to find it from a weird source, I think. Well, first of all, this website is pretty colorful, which is par for the course. There are multiple ways to find posts on the site. For example, you can search posts by the characters they feature.
so if you go if you go to this site now, there is some I believe there are some like new characters that have been added since last time. But uh, the order of these characters, like it's another joke that writes itself. Every one of your favorite Nintendo characters are here. There's Mario, Pikachu, Sheldon, Jabanyan, Esna, and Samus Aran, who's at the very bottom of the list. <laughs> Metro fans are crying. <laughs> but yeah, the line, the 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 the, the play Nintendo character lineup is so weird. Like, <laughs> QB is higher than Samus, and you got characters from Ever Oasis still there, I believe. Oh, we can check the site after. Why not? We got time. But uh... ouch. <laughs> Clicking on a character brings to a page that features content about them, from regular trailers and game announcements to pages containing other related activities. Also, what do these question blocks do? Oh! Get jump scared. <laughs> that actually caught me off guard. But there are multiple different animations that play when you click these, so that's a very neat touch. There isn't that much that's variety cute, in terms of actual things to do. Most of it is just quizzes, polls, and puzzles. Like here, I can take this quiz to find a game that stars my inner Mario. Do you guys have an inner Mario? <laughs> this is dumb. I love it. Well, let's see. I like making friends and, uh, yeah, helping them out. And, um, yeah. And, uh, oh, look, it recommended Super Mario Maker for the Nintendo 3D. Oh. Yeah, about that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, like we could. I think it probably still recommends that game nowadays. If you go on that quiz, the same quiz. Honestly, we could do like an entire stream of just like going on playing Nintendo and then doing all the dumb stuff. Yeah, most of the polls and quizzes are of the generic Buzzfeed style type, but sometimes they do get a laugh out of me, and other times, what the? Fortunately, there is also the play. Eh? Anyway, uh... a laugh out of me, and other times. Yeah, uh, I think this is, uh, <laughs> I believe this poll is sort of related to, related to something like, it's it's basically something related to Izzy, the Piranha Plan. It's kind of like, oh, Izzy likes funny photos, and then it's like, there's this poll. I forgot the context of this, actually. It's something related to Izzy, the Piranha Plan, though. So, you know, good. Something fitting this website's name, in which you get to partake in a handful of interactive activities. There's a Mario Maker style wallpaper creator. Yo, old Mario Flash games? Different tools that let you customize your photos with themed stamps. Nice. And a Captain Toad soundboard. <laughs> Not all these. For actual <laughs> mini games, though, you have things like different. Yeah, so this is what kind of what I was kind of like talking about. This was kind of what I was talking about when I said like I wanted to make like a sequel to the old Mario Flash games video where I wanted to take a look at official Nintendo Flash games. Of course, these are not Flash. This is like HTML5, but, you know, a similar concept. But, of course, playing Nintendo, all you get is, like, tile puzzles and not not very interesting stuff. But, like, you know, old Nintendo Flash games still have some sort of interesting qualities to them. That might be interesting to look at. For matchup games, the simple spot the difference game for New Soup U Deluxe. Mario Stargazer, which is a mini game where you look around a night sky finding constellations. Oh man, that music! Please give us Galaxy Free Nintendo. And not Nintendo did give us Galaxy on Switch, so hmm, which is where that music came from. So, so this Captain Toad and Toadette drawing tutorial. Take a page and a pen, draw a big Good deep cut. I like I like how Nintendo still acknowledges the Mario drawing song to this day. It's just kind of cool of them, even though it's something like from 2009. That's what it was really cool. Now these aren't the most exciting things ever, obviously, but it's serviceable for a site for toddlers and children, possibly with their own 3DS and or Switch as well. So this is mostly just supplementary entertainment. We're kind of past those good old days when you just looked up random Mario Flash games. <coughs> she was plugged. Uh, these are these those are way way more child friendly than whatever I looked at just now in the. <laughs> so you know maybe that wasn't a good that was a bad idea. 
And Nintendo definitely knows that their target demographic most likely owns one of their systems because they have sections on the website dedicated to updates on their latest games and whatnot including trailers and screenshots. It's basically my first Nintendo news site. I don't know about you, but I always get my latest Nintendo news from Play Nintendo. <laughs> you can probably go in there and it's like, Skyward Sword HD, there's probably something related to Skyward Sword HD. Like, they haven't stopped updating it, so. Oh yeah, there's also this section that's entirely dedicated to printables. Yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. Print out this Box Boy mood chart and you can- It's a classic. I don't know if I'm. I don't know if I kind of like forced it, but uh, apparently you guys really like it. So, attach a paperclip or a clothespin to your current mood. This is such a weird way to like you know, it can't just be it can't <clears throat> it can't just be a sticker or anything. You have to like get a crown and then clip onto it with a paperclip or clothespin, like. That is the weirdest, like, you could have just had, <laughs> I felt like probably could have just had, like, a mood chart, or, like, you could just have stickers, or something like that. This is a weird way to, like, mark something for a printable, but, uh, oh, because you're supposed to tape or glue the crown to the paperclip or clothespin, that's kind of, like, what it says. So you can stick it onto something, I guess. Whenever your mood changes, you can move the marker. I am no longer feeling long. I have to move. I'm, I'm spoiling the joke. Let me go ahead and. I'm feeling long today. Over That's a classic, dude. That's a classic right there. That's good. <laughs> uh, I don't know what else to say about that. I mean, we are all feeling long on this blessed day. Overall, this is a pretty tame site for kids. Still though, this might have actually been something that I would have gotten into at a very young age. I remember that I used to print random crap that I made in Microsoft Word or download it from sites like Disney all the time. And of course there's also a How do people actually print, like... How many children actually still print this stuff nowadays? Like, I know back, back in the early, like, ni late 90s or something like that, printing is more common. <laughs> Like when you're when you were a child in the late nineties, you go on the internet, you just print and everything you see. <laughs> I don't know about how, how common printing even is now. You share stuff on your phones or something. Oh no, this is not parental controls on, 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 on Play Nintendo. It was uh it's kind of well like uh it was basically just teaching you how to activate parental controls on other systems. Action for parents so the clueless mom can get an idea of how to do things like monitor their child's online activity, set up parental controls, and all that jazz. It's just a safe, family-oriented online environment, which I guess is a rare sight considering the current state of the internet. But then again, I haven't really been actively seeking out sites with a demographic far below my age. Now you might say, no one cares about this, but talking about things that not many people talk about or even know about is kind of my thing. And this is a lesser known, unique portion of modern Nintendo. If it's spot on the Nintendo homepage and relatively low sub count on YouTube or any indication. Raise your hand if you have a lower subscriber count than play Nintendo. <laughs> I do. No, oh, right, they have a YouTube channel. I almost forgot about that part. I saved the best for last, obviously. I heard they even had some original content there as well, so uh, let's take a look. <laughs> uh, yes, pal! Uh, yeah, yeah! Do you look. have any idea what time it is? What are you doing with all that stuff anyway? This is expert unboxing with Okay. Lizzie. I have to reconsider this whole Nintendo thing. Uh, okay. Honestly, if they, we could probably do like an entire stream just watching, <laughs> just watching those videos. Most of them are still up. I'll get to that in a bit more. But uh, <sighs> okay. Let's start from the top. We have the Play Nintendo Show, which is basically if Nintendo had a kids' TV show in the 90s, starring over. I just noticed something. Which is the Play Nintendo Show. 
Uh, that's not an O. Isn't this like the fan made font? Like, this is that regular O. Why? Why is this O? Is that is that a zero or is that part of the fan made font that they had for the Mario? Can we get a font expert on that? Like, <laughs> this is weird. I know, I know. Like, the, there was a fan made font to try to recreate the Mario style font, but the N looked weird. I forgot about the O. I think the O also kind of looked weird. It looked like that, right? <laughs> I have no idea of a. Uh... Hmm. Basically, if Nintendo had a kids' TV show in the '90s, I wonder if this set is still around. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think they've been making new episodes. Also, cool Bob on poster in the background. Look at that. I'd have that. <laughs> and then that swamp thing. Look at all these, these. This is good. Look at this decoration, dude. I like this. I wonder if the set is still around though in Nintendo of America. There's like it's just a one room. Naughty employees get locked in the play Nintendo room. I'm sorry I said that. Starring overly energetic hosts and a piranha plant named Izzy. It's about what you'd expect from that description. If you're looking for a great game to play this summer, like on the new Nintendo 2DS XL system, <laughs> we've got you covered. I can do wacky effects too. Whoa! <laughs> For I love how like people were asking if that if the media offline background was intentional or not. <laughs> it was intentional. Also, I I I I made a thing in Windows Movie Maker just to slap that in. For some of the more tamer stuff, you have game shows where families compete with each other in different Switch games. Yes, including One Two Switch and this family fun One Two Switch milking competition. Also, this is legitimately good. Like Mario, the Mario series is legitimately good series of videos where Mario reads fan mail. Wario, donate to Crowdfarter. There's a good there's a good reference. Uh Kirby, Kirby's friends of Mario, one Kirby Kirby and type Kirby types emails to Mario. Why would you tell some free coins? So just as greetings friend. And then <laughs> Daisy sends an email to Mario but not but not print but not Peach. Apparently, so there's that. Mail. Hmm. Well, I'm a lover of all the kingdoms oh, in the game, so and one of my favorites has to be the Cap Kingdom, since that is where I met my new friend, Cappy. <laughs> I kind of expected Mario speaking in full sentences to make me feel uncomfortable, but to be honest, I mean, listen to it. Like Charles Martinet is a national treasure. You're amazing! I can't wait to read through all these letters. Okie dokie, keep sending them in. The channel That's itself awesome. hasn't been updated a lot lately, often just re-uploading trailers, but it's an interesting look into the really weird side of Nintendo of America. Oh, there's also the side show. Okay. Uh, ask Izzy. I'm gonna go ahead and let you know. So, in case you didn't notice, Ask Izzy got removed from the Play Nintendo channel. <laughs> they got it got unlisted. I get it got privated. And the biggest, like the biggest, like uh, the most probable reason for that would be because it was kind of like you know getting it was showing off comments from kids, and that violates COPPA in some way. I have no idea. That was like pure speculation on that part, but that might be why it was moved. And there's like a big loss. I'm not sure if this was fully preserved. But for the purposes of making this video, I downloaded the, the original video where Izzy daps. And because all the uploads on YouTube are edits, so I kind of preserved the original in a way. I have no idea. Um, but uh, yeah. Called Ask Izzy. Also, like my reactions in the next part. I'm pretty sure I almost broke my computer. Izzy. I guess it's kind of similar to the Mario videos, except with the piranha plot. Hello everyone, it's me, the <laughs> Reginator. I just found a ring. <laughs> that fu- That- I- I- <laughs> That was a legitimate catch, if you, in case you were wondering. <laughs> Great comment, and I wanted to share it with you! Brandon Dino says, Can Izzy dab? I'll be honest, dude, dad. I have no idea what you're talking about. Ab about you. Oh. That's it. 
I've hit my limit. Go look it up yourself. I don't care. I've seen enough for one Halloween. I don't care if I get paid to so do that's this. What, uh, that, that, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure what I just did to my MacBook there is sort of broken in a way. Like, I, I, I didn't mention this until much... I didn't talk about this until much later. But, like, a few weeks after recording this video, one of the speakers in my MacBook, like, stopped working. <laughs> and, and it was kind of pa it was also already past the warranty so I couldn't get it repaired for free um, but then miraculously I, I can't say if I don't know if I should say fortunately or unfortunately uh, the MacBook same MacBook also experienced an issue uh, where the battery got swollen and it was starting to become very noticeable. It wobbled on my table, so it was kind of like that bad. And I thought I was gonna have to pay to get it repaired, but apparently I took it to the Apple Store, and uh, for some reason they offered to repair it for free, which basically included like replacing the entire like lower half of the thing with the keyboard and speakers. So uh, in essentially, they also fixed my speakers for free, and now my MacBook works normally. <laughs> so, so it worked out at the end. Uh, but, uh, I'm not gonna slam my MacBook against any surface ever again. And also, I am now starting to back up my contents daily. Please do that. For <laughs> I, bought, I bought a hard drive just to back my stuff up. I kind of wanted to, like, be on the safe side. I don't want to, like, break it again. <laughs> I don't, yeah. Uh, Play Nintendo did that to me. <laughs> uh, I think that's, like, the first time I talked about that MacBook slam or <laughs> killing the speakers because I'm pretty sure it, did. it didn't do it immediately, but I'm pretty sure it was <laughs> it was a factor. There's a parent's corner. I'm a I'm not a parent. Uh, what is the Wii U gamepad? What is the Wii U gamepad? Like, like, let's consider this. This is the Wii U gamepad. Okay, I see. Personalize your oh, Wii U experience by creating console. your own settings. Okay. So when uh, you sign in, Wii U knows your favorite games, TV shows, Game and pad. who you're talking to on Miiverse. Are these? Wait. Is that shot of Miiverse like actual Miiverse content? When you sign in, Wii U knows your favorite games, TV shows, and who you're talking <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait. Smash Flash 2? That's a Smash Flash 2 reference in the Nintendo video! And there's... <laughs> so is it this trophy in Smash Flash 2? Oh my god. What? <laughs> and tweet this. <laughs> tweet this. I can tweet this now. Do your... I'm changing my me. I'm sick of it. <laughs> a Nintendo employee like scroll through this section of Miiverse. I was like, yeah, that's good. Put that in. Talking to a Miiverse. One more week until Japan gets a release with a 3DS version. God, they're gonna keep the remaining characters and get under wraps, even though once again, with a ET. <laughs> Is that by Morshu? I'm done. <laughs> Dead, dude. Oh my god, I hope this is not just on the Play Nintendo site. I, I really hope this is somewhere on the Nintendo website as well. Verse. Oh. Frame back. Oh, it's just spoilers. Oh my god, the Smash Flash reference though. Connect and be social with other Wii U owners. Cut man trims down the competition. <laughs> oh my god, now I want to watch this. <laughs> what is Neevers? Please have some goat nuggets in here. Just can discuss and share their favorite <laughs> moments and tips from games they played. Dr. Luigi, this group is awesome. And find out the current buzz. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Creepy pasta. In the gaming community. When you're small, not so easy, but with a power up, I didn't get him once. <laughs> This is good. This is official Nintendo con sanctioned content. 